Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. Today, we are going to be taking a look at one of the fastest killing New Game Plus builds in Elden Ring. Just a quick thank you to everybody that's been supporting the channel, all the likes on the videos, the views. Thank you all so much for the support. It really means a lot. Do me a favor. If you enjoy this video in any way, shape or form, a thumbs up would be very much appreciated. And also, if you want to see more videos just like this one in the future, make sure you subscribe so you never miss any future your uploads now guys for me personally my favorite approach for any from software game my preferred playstyle was always melee focused extremely high damage attacks timing everything correctly we are using extremely rare weapons to find in elden ring and without the proper information and the correct place to look for this weapon it's easy to miss we are dual wielding two bandits blood curved swords both which are fully upgraded and infused with one of the best ashes of war in elden in ring seppuku honestly curved swords in general have some of the most satisfying move sets in the entire game these weapons are great for anybody that wants fast attack speed also more opportunities to attack the lunge and jump attacks when you do wield curved swords are amazing this lightweight melee focus build is perfect for anybody that wants to eliminate anything that gets in their way. This build will give you a significant amount of extra damage, and trust me, with the right talismans and correct attribute distribution, this build is going to be amazing for you. In all of my build videos, I'd like to show you guys what these builds look like at different level brackets. I decided to visit Renala the Moon Queen, which is actually one of the main bosses in Elden Ring. This boss gives you the ability to respec your attributes, and today, I'm going to show you exactly what your attributes would look like, depending on what level your character is. If you just started the game recently, and you are somewhere around level 50, your attributes could look something like this. Now the attributes to the left are my current attributes. I am level 250. What you want to pay attention to is the attributes to the right side of the screen. The main attributes you need to focus on for this build is Vigor, Dexterity, and Arcane. Vigor is going to determine your overall HP. That's your overall survivability. We have Dexterity, which is going to increase our physical melee damage. And then Arcane is going to increase our item discovery and most importantly, give us more blood loss. At level 100, we have Vigor at 45, Dexterity 35. I recommend increasing your Faith to at least 15 so you can utilize the Flame Grant Me Strength incantation that gives you even more damage on your build. And we have Arcane at 30. At level 150, our Vigor is at 60. We increased our mind just a bit because we are going to be using more incantations and obviously activating seppuku on both of our weapons. We have endurance at 20, dexterity at 45. We increased our faith to 25 this time so we could use the golden vow incantation which increases our offense and defense at the same time. And lastly, we have arcane at 40. At level 200, you will have more opportunities to increase other attributes. We are going to leave Vigor at 60. You don't need any more than 60, trust me. We increased our mind to 25, Endurance 25. We have Dexterity at 60, Faith at 25, and Arcane at 60. My character is level 256. We have 60 Vigor, 30 Mind, and Endurance. We have Strength at 20, Dexterity at 80, we kept our faith at 25. It doesn't make too much sense to increase it any further. The only incantations you will be using is Flame Grant Me Strength and Golden Vow. And last but not least, we have Arcane at 81. As I mentioned earlier, we are using two Bandits Blood Curved Swords, fully upgraded. And with our current attributes, you can see that our physical attack power is 242 plus 319. The Bandit's Curved Sword actually scales evenly with both Strength and Dexterity. Additionally, we have the Seppuku Ash of War that's giving us that 116 blood loss buildup. Seppuku is a forbidden technique used by the Swordsman from the Land of Reeds. Plunge the blade into your stomach to stain it with blood, 
increases attack power and improves ability to inflict blood loss. Just make sure when you apply this Ash of War that you go with the Blood Affinity. This is going to give you the maximum amount of blood loss build up, which is important for this build. Once you open up the map, make sure you go to the southern part of Limgrave. You will eventually run into the Church of Pilgrimage, where you will activate a Site of Grace. Once you spawn at the Site of Grace, go ahead and come over to the left side of the church, and you will eventually run into a Skeleton Warrior. You will see that he has the same weapons as you. All you have to do is farm them over and over again until they drop the weapon. It's fairly simple, and keep in mind, the higher your arcane, the higher your item discovery, which means a higher chance of obtaining this amazing weapon. We are also using a seal on this build. I am using the Dragon Communion Seal, fully upgraded plus 10. This build requires a seal so you can cast two incantations, okay? So we have Flame Grant Me Strength, which is going to increase our physical attack power by 20%. And we have Golden Vow, which increases our offense and defense simultaneously. For the apparel, I'm using the Marias Mask. We have the Traveling Maiden Robe, the Bandit Hand Wraps, and the Traveling Maiden Boots. If you want extra damage for your jump attacks, I highly recommend equipping the Raptor's Black Feathers. If you don't already know, this chest piece actually increases the strength of your jump attacks. You could also use the white mask which slightly raises attack power when there's blood loss nearby. For the talismans we are using the rotten wing sword insignia which greatly raises attack power with successive attacks. We have the lord of blood's exaltation, blood loss in vicinity increases attack power. The claw talisman works incredible for this build especially with the curved bandit swords. This talisman is going to enhance our jump attacks, and like I mentioned earlier, if you want to go with the raptor's black feathers, that's going to stack even more damage with your jump attacks. And last but not least, we have the dragon crest great shield talisman, which is going to enormously boost our physical damage negation, giving us more survivability overall. If you don't want to use the bandit's curved sword, there's a couple weapons I'm going to recommend. You could always dual wield the scavenger's curved swords, they do a little bit less damage but they are extremely effective since the build focuses primarily on dexterity you could always go with the katanas just make sure you use the blood affinity and seppuku is definitely going to be your best option the rivers of blood katana is always going to be a great option i mean this is one of the best weapons in the entire game it's definitely overtuned for sure Another one of my absolute favorite weapons to use is the Godskin Peeler Twin Blades. When you dual wield these with Bloodhound Step using a Blood Affinity, it is an incredible combination. For this build, I have 10 HP flasks and 4 FP flasks. I also wanted to show you guys my Wondrous Physic Mix. I am using the Thorny Crack Tier, which temporarily boosts successive attack power and the green burst crystal tier which temporarily boosts stamina recovery speed well guys i hope you enjoyed the overview of this build thank you so much for clicking on the video today the support means a lot if you enjoyed this video in any way shape or form like i mentioned earlier be sure to leave a thumbs up it really helps the channel out helps a lot with the algorithm the more likes we get the more engagement we have the more this video will be recommended to other players that may need it i've been making elden ring videos for a while i have builds for every type of playstyle on my channel so if you got some time check out the other builds on my channel and if you want to see more videos in the future be sure to subscribe become a part of the family and i'll see you guys in the next video thanks again